All right, now we're in the after show. Let's do this, fellas. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm not ready. Oh, yeah. So oh, just so you know, after show rules, man, if you decide you don't want to be here anymore, dip the fuck out. It's chill. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. All right, bye. All right. Thank God, finally. I mean. Just fuck this dude. You fucking prick ass motherfucker. Jesus. Cool. So I'd actually um I have movies and TV to talk about still. I didn't even get to touch on that at all. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. We for um, video games. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's a big week for video games. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> um, but uh, so I guess I'll, I'll go a little bit over uh, movies first. Um, I don't know if you guys watched any, but so I watched this one on Hulu. It's called It's a Disaster. It's a neat little indie movie starring David Cross and ah, God, I don't know her name. I keep wanting to say like Kirsten Dunst or something like that. I think she was the original Mary Jane in the uh not original, but like the one from uh Sam Raimi's fucking yeah. Spider Man's with McGuire and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a really good movie. Like I didn't know what to expect going into it. Um but it, it definitely kept me going through the whole thing. Uh basically so the plot is um these uh it starts off with david cross is like this uh the kirsten dunce whoever the fuck that is he's her new boyfriend and they're going together to a couple's brunch with all of her friends and you know he's awkward at first of course and you know whatever but um while starting some drama like like internal drama in the friend group and stuff starts to come up uh there's a knock at the door they open the door it's a guy in full fucking like radioactive hazmat suit like just standing there like what the fuck's going on so apparently a dirty bomb quote unquote was dropped in the nearby like main city and supposedly like a gas of some sort is spreading and shit so he's like hey tape your shit up bro like like close up seal up like you're gonna fucking die otherwise you know and so they basically take an already like building dramatic like group of people like like shit going down in their lives and they put them in that situation and it just amplifies the fuck out of it and it oh so fucking cool like it's a really fun thing to watch this group just break down you know I don't know. It's really cool. I definitely recommend it. Um, there's a really cool twist at the end with David Cross's character that I did not see coming at all, and it was fantastic. Um, and they leave you off with like kind of an ending that you're just like, well, what happens? Well, you know what? I'm satisfied. I'm fine. That's cool. So definitely check it out on Hulu. It's called It's a Disaster. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys watch any movies recently you want to talk about? No? Yeah. What? I've been think watching The Office, but... That's not a fucking movie. <laughs> God damn it, Cruz. Jesus Christ. Ask one question. Oh, I've been watching The Fuck off. No, really. Go ahead. Talk about The Office. That's cool. What are you, what are you thinking, man? Being so late to being like, like getting into the full watch through and everything. Yeah, it's it's a little weird because like I'm going through and I'm I, I remember back in like high school or like right after we graduated i remember sitting at Corey's house with like a group of people and actually watching some of these episodes and yeah as they like, were like aired for the first time and everything weird. yeah so like yeah, i mean i've seen most of them there's definitely some like you know gaps here or there where i'm like oh i didn't know that happened or or like oh i for- totally forgot this happened and then it explains why this whole other thing was going on yeah but um it's, i'm liking it you know it's obviously it's a great show it's it's funny uh i love watching everything that's been going on and the whole jim and pam build up thing was it, it was oh, it was yeah. well worth it that was the show man and that's why after that they they were kind of scrambling to find ways to keep it you know interesting and i think they did yeah. good until they got rid of michael scott that was when it was just like all right uh, uh. Yeah, nothing else for him to play off of anymore yeah, because they yeah. tried to um, they tried to recreate that with um, Aaron and Andy, but within uh, fucking Ed Helms being like in the Hangover and doing other stuff, then he kept disappearing from the show, and then they they just kept changing what they wanted to do with his character, and it just felt like 
you you could tell it was it was on its way out for sure oh yeah well i'm i'm at the i'm just about at that point now so like uh aaron's been in, introduced andy and aaron just hooked up um uh, th- there's been maybe a few episodes since then oh my god so uh, so the beauty of the build-up with jim and pam is that will they won't they like you, you kind of get that little like come on just fucking do it with fucking aaron and andy it's like what are you you're both fucking stupid like just one of you fucking figure it out like you both are like right. hinting hard at each other but neither of you want to pull the trigger just somebody balls up and it's it's not nearly as satisfying as the jim pam thing no it's it's definitely not Just Although... for research it was not kirsten dunst it was julia styles is that her name julia oh. styles that is she is not the uh, she's not the one from Spider-Man. She is from oh. like Ten Things I Hate About You. And oh, okay, that's what I knew. But she was around that time period, though. I want to say I, I that's blonde from the nineties, two thousands. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I was looking out, but yeah. Yeah, I guess like three different names, and it was, none of them were the right one. So Julia Stiles got. Yeah. Thanks. All right. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it's interesting when I get to talk to people who are like going through the office straight through the first time or like or even like having anything to do with the office the very first time because I it's, I'm I don't want to say I'm an expert, but I could say I'm I'm a decent authority on it. Having watched the whole series start to finish about 10 times plus now, maybe more than that, even I kind of lost track. Um, but it's cool because we I mean, I haven't met a person who did didn't like the office at some point like i get first season was tough to get through and scott's tots is fucking living yeah. hell <laughs> like that is like a curse word among office watchers for a very good reason yeah. don't trust the person who likes scott's tots just don't trust them <sighs> but oh, oh. but it's cool like everybody, everybody seems to enjoy the show like i haven't heard anyone say fuck that show man fuck the office you get a lot of like parks and rec haters but not really office haters you know it's interesting i've i know a couple people who just who think the office is incredibly bad yeah i believe this but they're they're the type of people that that think you know some of these these things that are universally despised are like oh no that's like the greatest thing ever it's like the hipster mentality Mm, gotcha yeah Yeah. i get that yeah, it gets weird. Unfortunately, there's people out there like that. You know, same people who... Well, I won't say they're the exact same people, but it's, it's the same as, like, that... How is that really a thing? Like, people who think that the Earth is flat. Oh, God. Like, Fuck. really? In this day and age, we seriously... You've never been on a plane? Like, yeah, you, you know what it is. Is people don't trust... Uh, they don't trust anything. Yep. If they can't see it with their own eyes, they don't trust it. Nope. I had nope. literally a guy came into a job I used to work at, and uh, he was a big flat earther. Was trying to convince us, and I, I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll engage a little bit. Let's see, let's see where he's coming from. Maybe he has like at least a logical point of view. Let's try it out." So I was just like, well, what about the pictures of Earth from space that we have? Oh no, it's the uh, curvature of the lens that caused it to look that way. That was when I gave up instantly because that is the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard. Like, I don't care how fish eye your lens is. It's not going to fold a flat image into a round ball. That doesn't make any damn sense. Like what? So that that pretty much set the tone for flat earthers for me. I was like, maybe maybe there are just some confused people out there or people who are just trying to think differently. No, these these guys are just morons. They're idiots through and through. Yeah, they, they they parrot what people told them to say. Think. Oh, abs- that's exactly yep. it. You get all the propaganda flyers, and they all say the same thing, and that's the same thing you hear every one of them say. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, we got you, and it's like, no, you didn't. That had no logic behind it at all. It just sounded like something that could possibly maybe be true, and if you did a little research, you'd realize it's not. And that's the problem is a lot of people are just like, oh, I saw a YouTube video, so it must be true. Well, did you do any of your own research? Did you check their sources? No, no, but I trust them. Well, why? Why do you trust them? <laughs> what is there there? Like, I, all right. What is the credentials? Well, they question me. 
they made yeah. me feel something and that's what it is it's a feel, it becomes a yep. feeling thing it just it feels right it's this value of feel over like reality like facts like thinking using your brain yeah. fact versus gut yeah and it's it's disgusting it's gross get out of yep. here yep fuckers <laughs> I do have another movie I watched, though, I did want to bring up as well, because I thought it was an excellent fucking film. It had uh, Omar Epps, who played uh, f- uh, fucking... Uh, fuck is... Goddamn, wow. Um, Foreman in House. Yes. Um, so the movie is called uh, 3022, like a year, 3022. Um, and basically it takes place on a uh, the, the International Space Station. The plot is, you know, they send up teams from different countries to go run it for you know 10 years at a time and all of that and um during their time up there oh miranda cosgrove is also in it i have to point that fact out because she looks damn good in it but um so basically during their time they're up there running it um shit goes down the the ship uh, the ship gets hit with something and they're freaking out about that and while they're trying to make up for that and fix it uh they notice something weird the fucking planet is just blown up earth is just in billions of pieces so yeah so effectively they're pretty much the only humans left alive um there may be some on europa because they were basically a station to yeah no it wasn't like the international space station it was like a specific station that was like halfway between them and europa like space space. station pangea pangea yeah that's what it was and um it basically was just like a a restock refill point between the two locations and so they didn't really talk too much about the other planet and like what was there they kind of tried to figure out a way to get there because they started being like oh okay pangea is not going to be you know self-sufficient long enough for us to stay here and it was was really cool very very strange you get to watch omar epps just descend into insanity which is really cool but it's a really good movie i definitely recommend if you're a fan of sci-fi and like some of the realities of what you know space travel is going to be coming up in humans future you know if we live long enough for that of course but it's really cool i I really enjoyed that movie uh omar epps was fantastic in it absolutely miranda cosgrove was great she just wasn't in it nearly enough for my taste um but you know obviously why but that's cool that's a cool movie i think that one was on netflix called 3022 go check it out yeah all right i forgot i actually did watch a movie oh what'd you watch uh it's one of the miyazaki films actually oh nice which one is your of the heart the spur of the heart i haven't seen that one yet pretty good it uh was very jarring in the sense that um so it it was about you know life in tokyo it was very kind of like slice of life kind of thing but it had like the the you can dream big type theme to it so it's about a girl who uh she was you know avid book reader didn't really have like high ambitions didn't know what she wanted to do with her life and um she noticed that as she was reading all these books in the library, the same name kept popping up. And so she kind of goes through trying to find this person. And um, and so it was very kind of roundabout. She goes on this, like, trip to the library to visit her dad, who works there to drop off food and runs into this the, the, this person without knowing that it's him. And so she follows him back or... She she runs into him multiple times. She doesn't really like him. At one point, she follows a cat that was on the train while she was heading to the library and just happens to go to his grandfather's, like, antique store. And it's it was very roundabout, but it was one of those heartfelt movies. I don't want to go too into detail because it'll take a long time because there was a lot of detail to bring it all the way back, back around. But... um. It was it was an okay movie, but it was really weird in the sense that uh, the 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 song that the movie kind of revolved around. Oh God! Yeah, I heard about this. Sorry, go ahead. So you already know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the the weird part is, I I then proceeded to hear said song. Not only do you hear it 
20 times throughout the movie. But then it it ended up being on an episode of The Office that same night that I was oh, when I was watching. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I can't get away. <laughs> ah, I know exactly which episode you're talking about, dude. That's so <laughs> fucking funny. So, Eddie, for since you aren't on the know and the listeners nope. aren't on the know, it was fucking Country Roads. Like, are you fucking, are you serious? Of really? Course. Of course. And from what I was explained, and Jeremy can correct me if I'm mistaken here, but there's different versions of it, including her singing it at one point, too, or something. Mm-hmm. Where she rewrote the lyrics to make it fit in, like, modern day of, of the time. This was back in 95, mo- modern day Tokyo. So, yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Pretty weird choice, I feel like. You know, you're watching a Miyazaki film and you get hit with that song. You're like, wait, what's going on? At so, one point, they're singing about West Virginia, and I'm just like, are we not in Tokyo? What's and going on? she's like, oh, I wrote this song. And I'm like, wait, what? How? How the fuck? <laughs> Bitch, you don't even live in America. What do you know about it? What? Right? It's John Denver wrote that one. John Denver. I, I don't know. I don't know shit. For a musician, I don't know like anybody's names. It's bad. Like, I can't tell you how many people have come in and referenced names, and I'm like, I know the name. But I have no idea what band they're from, and I don't know how to gauge what you're talking about because of that. So I'll just let you go. Oh, man. I'm, I'm not too great on that either. Although, some, sometimes I know. It's like with bands I care about, I'll do that. But like 80s fucking hair, garbage, ACDC, I don't know. Like, I don't care. Don't I don't want to know the name of ACDC. Why not? No, because they're the worst band ever. Like, well, next to Trapped, of course, but. Also, I'm fucking loving <laughs> this thing where people are just now realizing or like have been clueless the whole time that, you know, System of Down, Rage Against the Machine are political bands. This is fucking hilarious to me. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Wait, they've really? always been political bands. Every yeah, like that's what they were known for. That's why people like you either liked them or you didn't because they were so political. Yeah, yeah. I think so. But you know, they're they're putting up comments on like Facebook and shit, like you know, being very political because that's what they do. And then like people are like, you know, I really liked your music, but like I don't think you should be talking about politics. So I'm not gonna listen to you anymore. I'm like, what? Are you fucking stupid? Yes. What? Like on Surge's posts, and I'm just like, are you? What are really? you missing here? Have you never actually listened to the words? Because that's what I feel like is going on. Like that's the only way that makes sense. I believe Tom Morello, of uh, Rage, actually has a degree. Yeah. In, pol- in uh, political. Yep, that came out too a while back. Was uh, he had said something about politics and somebody commented on there like all right i don't think a, a lead singer of a band has any right to talk about it and he's like dude i have a degree in this like i am the person who talks about this bro like get it together that shit makes me laugh so hard mm-hmm. it's got that same feeling as like tony hawk stories about people like all right whose skateboard is this is tony hawk on this plane well yeah i'm right here <laughs> <laughs> Cody Hawk is hilarious, though. He is, man. I watched a video of him. Um, oh, dude. Fucking Tony Hawk remakes. Hell yes. So hype. But I watched a video oh, of yeah. him talking about so the tricks from like a trailer, or, like gameplay from it. And it's it was not very entertaining. He just kind of explained like what a trick was and why it wouldn't work if it was like a fake one or something like that. And it just he has like. Like, I love the man to death for what he's done for skating, but, like, he has, like, no charisma at all. He's just, like, the most just bland fucking white man <laughs> ever, I swear. And that that may just be from a little sample and that it, it may be wrong if I knew him personally, but from what I've seen, he just... He's got oh. such a low affect. Yeah, he doesn't seem like the the icon you would think he would be for a, you know the biggest known skater like, he's uh he's very dry i think is what yes he, is. he can be funny but it's kind of a dry humor yeah yeah it, it, he's very fucking subtle he's not like like a goofball like you'd think of all the skaters he's just kind of a dude exactly so, so i mean i respect the hell out of it 
but no, I'm trying no, to for think. Sure. I'm trying to think. He he's the literally the literally the sort of person in both how he acts and how he looks. They go, oh, it's some white guy. You yeah. put a you put a skateboard under a mud. Oh my god, it's Tony Hawk. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's a hundred percent how I feel about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's oh, like, yeah, he, he's what in he his was on fifties now. Yeah, he's around around that. No, he was on uh, Mass Singer. It, on do who? you know that show, The Masked Singer? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, or you like you know, I, take um, random celebrities and put them in there. Yeah, he was in there. He That's decided, funny. all right, I'm going to sing. He sang a song from The Cure. Oh, interesting choice. I'll have to link you the... Yeah, hey, he actually sure. did a good job. He just didn't get anywhere, but... You know, well, he... well, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. But, yeah, he's, like, like in his 50s or so, and, like, I mean, he could still way, like, skate circles around me, so, you know... That's yeah. I was gonna say that's not saying much, but yeah. No, I know. Hey, I could. I'd done a whole ollie, okay, and then and then busted ass trying to attempt another to one. Say, but that the one that you ended on your ass afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get some hip pads because like I know how to do it right now, but like it's you know muscle memory is everything, so I just gotta practice. Yeah, he did Friday. I'm in love by the Cure. Oh, interesting choice. That's a pretty popular one, so not super surprising. But I'm I'm curious to see how he did it. That's that's cool. Yeah, I'll just I'll have to look it up. But yeah, that on the Discord. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna check that out. Um, let's see, do I have anything else really I wanted to talk about in particular? Oh, oh, oh. oh Space Force! I can't believe I haven't mentioned this yet. Space Force. Thanks for sending that. I will definitely check that out when we're done. Uh, Space Force. I don't know if anyone else has watched that yet. Did I talk about it before? I don't remember. I think you did, yeah. Yeah, finally, uh, we got around to finishing it recently. And honestly, I really enjoyed this show. I think it was great. Um, once you get past the fact that it's not The Office, because they're like, hey, Greg Daniels and Steve Carell. Haha, <laughs> remember Office? But, like, it's not The Office. Um, it was really, really enjoyable. It's a very different show. Um, but you've got the Steve Carell is, of course, fantastic. He he does a little bit of Michael Scotty stuff, but that's just, you know, Steve Carell, like what he brought to that character anyway. Yeah, of um, course. Fucking Ben Schwartz, though. God damn it. What a fucking treat. God bless them for putting we're, him in this we're show. We're going to unleash him upon the world sooner or later. Oh, dude. He's so great. I Ben Schwartz is like one of my favorite people of all time. I watched a stand-up of him and Thomas Middleditch, or Little Dick. Um, <laughs> or not, well, not stand-up, but an improv show with the two of them. And yeah, that they was... had like all that together for a long time, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were big doing that back in the day. Um and I always liked um, like Thomas Middleditch in like shows and stuff. He always plays a character that I want to punch in the face because he that's just fits ju- the type. Thing, yeah. yeah, but um, I I gotta I gave him a lot of props on his improv's good, but Ben Schwartz is just fucking next level on improv, and uh, he's just so such a funny guy at all times, all times. Um. Well, Lisa Kudrow plays. Uh... Steve Carell's wife. That's that's amusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Phoebe from Friends. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. yeah. That Patrick oh, really? Warburton's in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Patrick Warburton. Hell yes. He's a very little. I think maybe two or three times to see him for like maybe a couple minutes at a time, but he is exactly what he needs to be for that part, and it's great, <laughs> and I love him. Another one of my favorite actors. Oh, Jane Lynch is the chief of naval operations. Forget oh, Jane Lynch is, he yes. is the best. He is, oh, he's really good at playing a character that you, you fucking hate too. He's really good at that. Oh, uh, but yeah. there. The whole thing's it's been pretty fun. It's a fun, interesting like show. I, I, I enjoyed it. Um I'm not sure where they're gonna go with the way they left off at season one because it was kind of pretty major the way they did it. But it's cool. I'm I'm actually looking forward to a season two of it. And if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely check it out. First couple episodes are a little like, I don't know, but they, they really hit their stride and have some really good bits in there that keep you coming back. So It's on my list after I finish The Office. Oh, yeah, dude. 
just just remember go into it this is not the office <laughs> yeah it's gonna be very weird for me because i'm going straight from the office yeah it, it's very weird because he's it, there is some similarities to michael scott but it's really it's still kind of a very very different character because he is much more aware more intelligent way yeah, I mean, less cringy the military and high up i'd hope he's intelligent to at least a certain degree yeah, but what I love too in the show is they always refer to um, the president as POTUS, and the way they talk about him, it's very clear that they're not even pulling punches that it's Trump, but it's not in a way that could get them in any trouble, or they never straight up say Trump or anything like that. They always just call him POTUS, and it it just it it links up to some really funny things. Um, and the attitude of the Secretary of Defense is. It's exactly what his administration is, and it's fucking perfect in that way. So, but they don't make the show about that. It's more about Steve Carell's character and his family and stuff. So, like, it's, and of course, the whole idea of getting back to the moon and everything. And it was really, really cool. Like, I think they really did well with that show. And I hope more people can get over it not being the office and give it another shot because I've seen a lot of backlash like that so sucks it's uh, it's not even half as funny as the office well, it's not trying to be it's not a pure comedy like the office was like there's more to it than that it's a subtle satire looks like yeah that. yeah with of course the Steve Carell flavor yep. which is always great always great so. <sighs> all right yeah. I think that's pretty much killed my whole list of topics. So I got nothing. <laughs> all right. I'm just listening. I think cool. that's that's all I have. It's late. Yeah, it is late. Fuck. It got late real quick. All right, sure that's did. cool. Uh, How I'm long cool was with this? calling. I mean, then. This has to been like at least a good like two hours. We're we're closing in on two hours since I started recording. Actual podcast yeah. time between this part, the after show, quote unquote, and the regular part, probably about. Uh, hour 30, hour 40, something like that. Mm. I mean, we, we did, like, not do one for three weeks, so we had a lot of pent-up, plus the PS5. Yeah. PS5. Yeah. So, Fuck y'all, I'm talk. excited. Alright. Yo, one more thing on the PS5, though. Just real mm-hmm. quick before we go. I'm, I'm thinking this is really cool. I will definitely buy the disc version, but they made a digital-only version. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a little... cool option to have in case you know you already know you're not going to be buying discs. Like you have a kid and is they fuck up every then, disc thing. I'm hoping it will. Nobody said anything about price. I think uh, Microsoft and Sony are kind of waiting for the other one to do it to outbid them. So we might not know until like a month before it comes out. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. Sounds but I'm I, I'm imagining the digital only one's going to be cheaper because they don't have to put out the money for the disk drives and such but it's it's cool like giving you that option i think that's really cool instead of what i kind of feared is heading towards a digital only world and i really don't want that really don't want that like i've grown to like digital but i just i still love having physical copies of stuff just nice yep i agree agree. something nice about holding the game case in your hand popping the disc out yeah Yeah, having that art case in your hand Having the oh, shelf with disc. cases, you know, like, like, ooh, look at all these sexy games. Which one am I gonna pull out and just, ooh, insert right into that slot? Ooh. I mean, you know, we had to get dirty eventually, so I'm glad that happened. Yep. Especially, especially the after show, not the main podcast. Yeah, we're like, but that's okay. That's all right. But that's all I had. Yeah. So, if you guys all are right. good. I'm good. All right, I'm good. All right, well, thanks, guys. It was fun, all as right. always. I'll catch you all later. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Peace.